Welcome back to the 51st part in this Python series on the Django framework. In the last video we talked a bit about the Django forms and how you can actually add a custom attribute to the elements rendered using the Django widgets into the HTML template itself. Well, that was involving Bootstrap, so I thought I'd address a sort of large problem with the website uh, as it currently is at the moment. Uh, with regards to Bootstrap and how you can use that specifically on small devices, so really mobile devices uh, primarily. So I'll first show you what the issue is and then sort of show you what is essentially quite an easy solution to be able to fix it. Uh, but it is quite a big issue, especially if you're trying to use the site on mobile. So at the moment you can see this is our site and on desktop it's perfectly well optimized and you can click the links and it it just works as you'd expect but if we open up the Chrome developer tools I just did alt command I on a Mac or uh, control shift I on uh, Windows and Linux uh, that'll open up the Chrome developer tools now what you can do is you can actually click on well if we resize this to a mobile like a smartphone type size uh, this sort of looks relatively well optimized, but if you click on this drop down, you can see it doesn't work. And to sort of show you where it would actually look like on mobile, because this isn't really an accurate representation, uh, you can actually use what's called the uh, device toolbar. If you click on that, you can see what it would actually look like on a mobile device. And at the moment you can see I'm in the responsive mode here, but you can choose a particular device, say like an iPhone 6 for example. Uh, and you can see it's just loading the desktop site, but on an iPhone. So if you deployed this application, this is what it would look like. It wouldn't be the optimized version that you might think you would be getting uh, when you don't have those tools enabled. So like, like this, which is how we want it to look. So let's go ahead and fix both of those things because they're really not too difficult to fix. So the first one is going to be the fact that when you're in this view, uh, so whenever you're trying to view it on a smartphone in, in real life, like when you deploy the site for example, uh, you're going to see the desktop site. So this is because the browser has not been made aware of the actual device width itself and therefore doesn't really know to render it any differently. It just assumes everything's a desktop because that's its, its assumption. It doesn't know any better. So to change that, what I can do is add something in the meta uh, on every single page. So in other words, in the base template that we're using uh, which from which all our other templates extend. So I'm going to go quickly to the accounts app uh, templates base and in the head so above this head block, because remember if you put it inside this head block then any template which is extending from this template, uh, this block uh, may get replaced. So make sure that's above this so that the meta in this case always applies. So I'm going to add a meta tag and I'm going to say name is equal to viewport viewport. So you can think of the viewport as a way of telling the browser uh, what size the device is, what resolution in other words to render the web page at. So that's sort of how you think about a viewport in a sort of practical sense. I would, that's how I would think of it anyway. So I'm going to say content is equal to and then this is where we say the actual width. So simply width is equal to uh, device width and I'm going to say uh, initial scale is equal to 1, 1.0. So then remember to close off that meta tag and if we reload the page that should be all we need to do to actually optimize it. So all that did was it set the width equal to device width which means that it knows now, the browser knows that, oh, okay, so this has a lesser width, which means we need to render the uh, CSS, the bootstrap CSS, accordingly. So before it just had no information to base that on, which is why it didn't work. So that's the first sort of major issue address, which is why uh, it looks, as you can see, significantly better now. Uh, and we can still use it as we would on a uh, on a desktop site for example uh, but it's it's just in a mobile format which is fine 
So now the other thing is this sort of uh, button up here which is still broken and that's because it relies on the bootstrap CSS and of course that has a dependency of uh, jQuery as well because bootstrap uh, JavaScript uses jQuery, it won't work without it. So I need to add both of those things and I think the easiest way of doing it is going to be through a CDN and that's just because it's the sort of quickest and easiest way of uh, getting it straight onto your page and I'm going to add it at the bottom of the base template so this is where you'd normally add your JavaScript scripts and so I'll just copy both of those over so I've got the bootstrap CDN uh, just go to getbootstrap.com which is sort of the main bootstrap website uh, come come down to sort of, you can download if you want to download the static files and then put them into your uh, static uh, folder and then use them so that they're locally stored on your web server then that's perfectly fine but uh, for this example I'll just copy this uh, so we want the latest compiler minified JavaScript minified just means it's going to be a little bit faster to load because uh, it's just a slightly smaller file so I'll just paste that in there and so that's the bootstrap one if we do jQuery uh, I'll just go for the minified one this is code.jQuery.com I'll just copy that and I'll paste it in but you have to remember to paste it above the bootstrap because if you don't then uh, jQuery won't be loaded on the page before bootstrap which means that if you were to put jQuery after bootstrap then bootstrap still wouldn't work because it relies on jQuery and it has to be loaded before it loads bootstrap otherwise it just won't work so now if we if we try that again with both those CDNs you can see jQuery and bootstrap J uh, the JavaScript libraries are actually coming through now and now if we click on it as if by magic it just works so this is sort of the mobile optimized version of our desktop web page and as you can see that's significantly better now because it means that users can actually navigate through our website on a mobile device whereas before it was either the desktop site or the mobile version but the button was broken so it didn't work it's just a mess basically and that was quite a quick fix but it really really improved the sort of uh, the site overall especially on mobile which is really the thing you have to optimize for primarily in this day and age anyway in the next one I think we're gonna have to talk about something a little bit more jangly because this is very non-jangly in a Django sort of tutorial series so let's do many-to-many -many relationships